Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 39 of our Unshakable podcast. And I am so glad you decided to join me today. As you can tell, I am flying solo. But last week, whenever we did our podcast, I was not. Not only did I have Pastor Brandy with me, but I also had our special guest, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Estrada from over at Kingdom Life Church. So glad we had them with us. We were able to talk more about marriage, and uh, but also some other principles about the kingdom. So uh, I think that will help anybody that will watch it. But make sure you go back and watch last week if you did not. Today, I want to do a recap on what we've been talking about on Sundays. Of course, we've been on this series called What is Love? Pastor Brandy knocked the ball out of the park on Mother's Day. Of course, she doesn't preach her typical Mother's Day sermons. She's very prophetic in nature. She's uh, used of God to bring those prophetic words to us as a church. But she brought a tremendous word about what the Father's love looks like. And you want to make sure that you get up on the YouTube channel and do watch uh, uh, that message from Mother's Day if you were not there. Today, I want to talk about some things that we talked about this past Sunday. I got to do part two. And uh, really, whenever we're talking about the Father's love, uh, you have to go back to the scriptures. You have to go back to what the Heavenly Father says about His own love. And we went to Ephesians chapter 3. And Ephesians 3, such a powerful, powerful chapter there in, in that book that Paul wrote to the Ephesians church. In fact, in that one part there in the middle of the chapter, he starts talking about us getting a revelation of the bigness, the vastness of God's love for all of us. And uh, he said when we get a revelation of that love and it brings us into an experience of that love, that we can actually all be transformed and changed and have the full measure of the presence of God, the richest measure of the presence of God in our lives. And I think that's what all of us want. We want to have the presence of God in our life. We want to have the, the most of God we can get. And it really begins with having that revelation of how much God really loves us and how big that love is and what that love looks like. So we went from there uh, over to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And uh, chapter 6 is a wonderful chapter. Again, I think the whole Bible's great. But chapter 6, we're looking at the latter part of that chapter. And God the Father begins to talk to us, obviously, through the Apostle Paul. But he says that if we want to experience God the Father's love for us, the Heavenly Father's love, the first thing we have to do is we have to come out from among them. We have to come out from among the world. We have to come out from unbelievers. We have to come out from among uh, just our old lifestyle and our sin. It doesn't mean that we fix ourselves. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. It doesn't mean we clean up ourselves before we can get to God. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. But what he's saying is make that decision in your heart that you're going to come out from where you are and start making steps towards the Heavenly Father. It's like the prodigal son, that story that we find in the book of John, actually the book of Luke, sorry, that Jesus gave us. And it was a story of, of, of this uh, one of the, the younger of two sons that wanted all of his inheritance right up front. Now, I don't know how that happened. Most of the time that doesn't happen in today's society. You usually get your inheritance once your father passes on, your parents go on, then you get an inheritance. But he he demanded it at, at you know, I don't know how old he was, but his father was gracious and good enough to go ahead and give it to him. And that younger son went out and he left father's house and he just went and just had just wild living. As actually one translation said he had, you know, he was just partying it up. He was with harlots. He was with prostitutes. Uh, he was partying. He was buying everybody's drinks. He was spending his money on anything and everything. And uh, the fact of it is, is that it got to the point where he lost it all. And he, he was at this place where he was at the worst place of his life. He had no money. And uh, he found himself working for a pig farmer. Think about it. Here's this, he has a father that's so rich and has lands and servants and probably houses and, 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 and treasures. And now he's working as a, for a pig farmer and he's slopping pigs. And he says he was so hungry that even that slop that he was given the pigs... Uh, it started looking tasty to him. I mean, that, you're, you're pretty hungry when that starts happening. I mean, and he finally came to himself. And then when he came to himself, he says, what am I doing here? I can, I can at least go back to my father. Because he knew his father obviously was a merciful father. Uh, he was just, but he was also merciful. And he knew if he would go back to him, probably begging with him, at least he could be one of his hired servants. But when he went back to the father, how many people know that 
that road back to the Father was a road of humility. He, he had to humble himself to come back, be repentant to come back. But when he did, the Father was, it seemed like from what Jesus is saying, that the Father was like watching, waiting for him to come back. And it's like if he was sitting on his porch, he was on the edge of his seat, looking out over the horizon for his, his son to come back. And when he saw his son in the distance, the Bible says that he began to run to his son and he immediately be, began to embrace him. Now, of course, the prodigal, he begins to start, uh, you know, confessing his sins, repenting to his father. You know, he's just coming. But the father already saw his repentance. He saw his heart. He saw his his humility and immediately he began to receive his son back and he he said hey I'm going to get you a robe I'm going to get that those pig clothes off I mean can you imagine you're slopping uh, you know slopping pigs you're putting all the food down there from the heat you're probably filthy dirty who knows what else you got on you and he said, I'm going to get you some new shoes. I'm going to get you a ring for your finger. And I'm going to throw a party. We're going to, you're going to have the best cut of meat. I've been fattening a calf out there for a special occasion. And we're going to do this for you. And you could see how this all transpires uh, for the prodigal son and the father's love and how that happens. And I believe it speaks really of how God deals with all of us, whether or not we're a prodigal or if just coming out of just being someone that's lost, that's uh, never even known God. Notice here that, that that prodigal had to come to himself. The father didn't get down in there in the mud with him and go, oh, I accept you just as you are. No, the father in love waited patiently for him to come to his senses. And, and that's really the road for all of us. All of us have to come to our senses. All of us have to realize, hey, if I'm going to experience the Father's love, I've got to come out from where I am and begin to go towards the Father. That's, a, that's, that's that path of humility. That's that path of repentance. So whether you've never come to Christ or you have and you've walked away from him, the same path is that path of repentance. But, you know, again, then you see the mercy of the Father. As soon as he sees the heart of repentance of his son and he sees the actions that's following it, the Father begins to take off running. And I believe that's what the Father does to all of us is that he said there in 2 Corinthians 6, he said, when you come out from among them and you separate yourself from them, he said, then I will be, he said, I will receive you kindly. That was the first thing he said. I'll receive you kindly. Just like he did with the prodigal, he opened up his arms and he accepted him. He received him. That's what the Father does to all of us. He shows us his love by receiving us kindly. Then he treats us with favor. That's exactly what he did for the prodigal in that story. That father treated him with favor. I mean, he gave him a robe. He gave him sandals. He gave him a ring. He, he threw a party. Talking about favor. Talking about blessing. I mean, I mean, that prodigal is probably blown away but that's what the Father does for us. When we come to Him in humility, in repentance, and in faith, then He receives us kindly. And that's when He begins that work of transformation in our life. And He begins to treat us with favor. And then uh, He says that I'll, I'll be a father to you. And, and that's what the Father was to that prodigal. He began to be a father like a father does. A father uh, begins to, to, to help and care for the, his son. And that's what the Father does for us. And when he's a father to us, then we can know that he'll take really good care of us, that we can trust him with, with our lives. We can trust him with today. We can trust him with tomorrow, with our future. You know, Jesus said that in Matthew chapter six, he says, why are you being so anxious about your life, what you're going to wear, what you're going to put on, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink? He says, that's what all those that are, that are not saved, that are Gentiles, or that are not part of the covenant of God, people that are not believers, people that are lost, that's, that's how they live life. They're always worried about their life and always worried about tomorrow. But, but, but Jesus began to help us to realize that if God takes care of the birds, and if God even takes care of the flowers, the grass, the field, how much more will he take care of us? The Father already knows what we need of before we ask Him. And the Father wants to take really good care of us. That's why He goes on to tell us in 1 Peter chapter 5 that if we'll cast all of our cares, all of our anxieties, all of our worries, all of our concerns once and for all in Him, that He'll, he'll, he'll care for us affectionately and He'll care about us watchfully. He'll take really good care of us. And that's what the Father does when we come to Him. That's the Father's love for His kids. The last thing of that he said there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, that not only would he be a father to us, but that we would be his sons and daughters. Now think about that. That gives us identity. 
We're no longer children of, of the enemy. We're no longer child, fa, our fathers, no, no longer the devil. I mean, now we're, our father is the heavenly father. Now uh, we're, we're no longer orphans. Now we're, we're sons of God. We're no longer away from God, out of his kingdom. Now we're part of the citizenship of heaven. We're in the family of God. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. In fact, we're royalty. We're royalty. Our father is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. That's who our dad is. And we become sons and daughters of God. Now think about that. Uh, you know, if, if you are a son of a king or a queen on this planet, then you have a lot of access to what that king, that queen has. And we have access to what the Heavenly Father has. In fact, the Bible tells us because we're sons of God that we're also heirs of God and we're co-heirs or fellow heirs with Christ. Uh, in that story of the prodigal, you know, you have that last part where uh, the elder son, uh, as he began to find out all that was happening and the parties going on and all the celebrations happening, that, that elder son, he decided not to go into the party. In fact, he was resentful. He had an attitude. I mean, he was mad. I think he was mad at the, at the younger son. And then he had some issues with his father, like, what's going on? And, and the father had to come out and talk to him. So why aren't you coming in and celebrating? And of course, the elder son begins to start pleading his case. And he starts wanting to let the father know how his younger brother has dishonored him. And he dishonored the family. And then, then he comes back. And now you're just celebrating all this stuff. And yet I've been with you all of these years. And you've never even given me a, even a, a, a little party with a, with a little goat to eat, you know? And, and so he's got this attitude and he's pouting. He's feeling like, you know, the, what's up? And the father comes back and says, listen, here's your brother. Here's my son. He was lost. And if he never made changes, if he wouldn't have come back to me, we, we probably would have lost him forever. But he's repentant. He's come back. He's come back home. He said, that which was lost now saved. That which was lost is now found. Why shouldn't we celebrate his return? He said, but for you, he said, at any moment in, in your life with me, you could have had a party. You could have had a robe. You could have had a ring. You could have had sandals as much as you want because he said this, and I love this phrase that Jesus uses in telling the story. The father says back to his elder son that all that is mine is yours. And isn't that true with our heavenly father? He said it so many different times, especially with throughout the New Testament, that he's given us the kingdom and th that all that is his belongs to us, that we're heirs of God, again, fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. And that shows us the Father's love. We don't have to just experience the Father's love by becoming a prodigal. In fact, I encourage you not to be a prodigal because the prodigal goes through a lot of stuff. I mean, he goes through a lot of stuff you don't want to go through. Thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for the grace of God. But you don't want to put yourself through that. But if you're one of those that are serving God and that have been a faithful son in the house of God. Listen, don't, don't, don't be bitter, don't be resentful, and don't even be upset at God because maybe you haven't seen a breakthrough yet or you haven't seen things break through for you as like you wanted to or God move on your behalf. I just wanna encourage you, listen, you're a son. So as a son or a daughter of God, start acting like one. Start, you know, come on, just grow up a little bit and realize that you have access God has given us his name. He has given us authority. He's given us a right at the throne of grace to pray and get our answer, prayers answered. Jesus said, if you'll say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. Then start, start acting like you should as a son in your rights and your privileges that you have in Christ and begin to take hold of those things that God the Father has promised you because God the Father loves us. And you know, we, we see that love demonstrated in different ways and especially where we are in our maturity level. It's just like a baby, a baby that just comes into the earth. We're gonna, I mean, we're all gonna be acting silly over that baby. You know, I was just watching my wife yesterday. She's looking at something on an, on a, on an Instagram reel and she likes looking at, she likes, she's got, you know how it is with Instagram. You look up one thing and then you start seeing all these reels about it. She looks up things with babies. I think she wants to be a grandma because she ain't having any more babies. So that's just where it is with all of us. But she, I think she wants to have grandbabies. Our kids are not quite ready yet. 
but she's getting in that place where she wants that, and she's she's looking at baby reels, you know. So this one little baby, they have them, and he's this goo goo and gaga, and she's talking to the baby, and my son is looking over there, going, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well, she's talking to this baby, but of course the baby can't hear, but he's on the reel, but it looks like." that he's actually interacting with my wife. It was kind of a strange thing, but the fact of it is, you know how it is with babies, everybody just loves a baby, and they're just, and especially when it's it's trying to talk and it's trying to communicate to you, and it's just really precious. So you, 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 you love that baby differently, not more, not less, but you love that baby differently than you do your 10-year-old. And you love that 10-year-old differently, not more, not less, than you do your 15-year-old. And then you love that 15-year-old differently than you love, you know, that 18-year-old. And, and it goes on. You, your, your love is not more or less. It's just different in how it's demonstrated. That's how the Heavenly Father is. And so when you're a baby Christian, you're just getting saved. It seems like, you know, you just squeak out one prayer and God begins to start moving. It's because that's where you are. That's where you are in your level of faith. That's where you are with God. But as you grow, God expects more faith out of us. As we grow, God expects us to take our rights and our privileges and, and work it like an adult would. And that, just like that father in that story of the prodigal son, like he expected his elder son just to go ahead and, hey, if you want these things, go get it. It's, it's yours. It belongs to you. It's the same love. It's the same provision. It's just a different way of accessing it. So I just want to encourage you today, listen, God the Father loves you. So no matter where you are on your journey in your Christian life, Father loves you. The way you access his love is always through that place of humility and that place of faith. Just like that prodigal had to access the Father's love for him when he come back to that place of humility. And then what little faith he had, just hoping the Father, believing that the Father would at least let him have the servant's you know, portion, but obviously the father wanted to give him the son's portion. And then just like that elder son, he had to receive what he was going to receive by humility. He couldn't be in pride about it. He still had to humble himself. And then he still had to use his faith at that level that he was at. So no matter where you are, man, God is good. And he loves us. When we come out from among them, we separate ourselves. He'll receive us kindly, treat us with favor, be a father to us, and we'll be his sons and daughters. So that's a little synopsis. I preached a little bit on it today, but we, we did a whole sermon on it this past Sunday. So if you weren't there, make sure you go back and watch that. This coming Sunday, we're going to be on part number three of what is love. And who knows where we're going to go this Sunday, but it's going to be good. It's Pentecost Sunday. It's also Memorial Day weekend, and we're going to be honoring graduates this coming Sunday at the 930 and the 1130 service. So a lot is happening, but man, we want to make sure you're there. So make sure you get there. Be a part of it. Invite your friends to come. Bring your relatives there. It's going to be a powerful, powerful Sunday as we gather together to worship Jesus, our King, our Lord, our Savior, and our Master. So thanks for joining in. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell other people about it. Make sure they subscribe to it and that you keep watching these podcasts every Wednesday at 12 noon. And we'll see you Sunday, 930, 1130. See you later.